name is Adrian Williams. I'm with the Village Project. And as I indicated, we have been doing Kwanzaa for 13 years. And now we have 17 events this week throughout the city. So welcome, everyone. And we are going to uh, the Village Project is a nonprofit functioning out of the Western Edition. And in addition to doing Kwanzaa, we have an after school program, we have a summer camp, and we do free community events. So everybody sit back and let's enjoy opening day of Kwanzaa. I want to bring up right now Father Eric, one of my favorite people, to open with a prayer. Father Eric is from the Episcopal Diocese. Thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Let us just take a moment to remember those who have preceded us and let the ancestors speak to us. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. Gracious God, who is giver of life, thank you for our many blessings and for the beauty of this bountiful earth. Forgive us for taking many things for granted and pardon us for abusing, exploiting that which is your creation. But we are people who are responsible stewards. We are responsible servants to you. And merciful God, your creation gives us and grants us liberation. Let the first fruits of your spirit heal our hurting world. Help us transform ourselves from, away from bombs but into bread, those bullets into books, and that we count our blessings and name them one by one as we start this day. Ashe. 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 Thank you, Father Eric. Now, we have been here in City Hall, I think for 12 of those 13 years, and we are always hosted by the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. So I am very pleased to introduce you to Mr. Alex Lazar. Did I? Yes, Director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adrian, And welcome, everybody, to the 13th annual Kwanzaa celebration here in San Francisco City Hall. As Ms. Adrian mentioned, my name is Alex Lazar, and I'm joined here with my colleagues Ashley Murray and DeAnthony Jones. We're here on behalf of Mayor London Breed, and we want to welcome you and the city family here to begin our celebration. So again, thank you to Ms. Adrian Williams. We all know that as a director of the, please, As the director of the Village Project, which is a youth service organization that focuses on educational and cultural enrichment for our youth and their families in the Western Edition, we're all better being friends with Adrian. so thank you again. She's a driving force of the celebration of Kwanzaa throughout San Francisco by connecting traditionally African-American communities for this joyous celebration. Thank you again, um, Eric Metoyer, for your opening prayer. We are joined here by many young folks, by many performers. We have the Village Kids Chorus. We have Brianna J. Dancers. We have the Dimension Dance Theater. And you will also be hearing, hear, hearing from Dr. Maestro Curtis, who will provide the keynote for today's celebration as well as the C-notes who are in the back there, we all remember them from Mayor London Breed's inauguration just six months ago. <laughs> Kwanzaa was created by Dr. Maua Lana Karagana in 1966. It's celebrated annually by more than 30 million people worldwide over seven days, starting today all the way through January 1st. The values of Kwanzaa, Ngozo Zaba, 
or the seven principles, are critical tools for addressing the issues facing African American community today. And today we celebrate Umoja, or unity, to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Now, thanks to Ms. Williams, now through January 1st, there will be ceremonies throughout the neighborhoods in San Francisco, including Hamilton Rec Center, over the George Davis Senior Center in the Bayview, the main library across the street, Visitation Library in Visitation Valley, Bayview YMCA, Third Baptist Church, the Western Edition Family Resource Center, St. Cyprian's Episcopal Church, to name a few. So we also thank the community partners that will help make this week a memorable one. Lastly, as families, friends, and communities gather this week to light the Kinara, we join in sending our best wishes for good health and happiness in the new year. Tonight, City Hall will light up in the colors of the Kinara, and we are really excited for that. Thank you all, and have a joyous celebration. Yes, I, I failed to mention, for the first time in 13 years, City Hall will light up in the red, black, and green candles of the Canara. Yay! Woo! So I am pleased as pie. Thank you, guys, for Neighborhood Services. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. Thank you so much. Now, we're going to move right along because we have to get out of here, and we want to be on time. So we are going to have Brother Malik come up, talk a little bit about Kwanzaa, and then pour libations. Habarigani. So I'm saying the word Habarigani, and the word Habarigani means what's the news. And when I say what's the news, today's news is unity. But we first say Umoja, unity, right? So what we want to do is the purpose of the Kwanzaa event is to vibrate our young to feel good about their African selves. Ashe? All right. Contrary to popular belief, Kwanzaa is not a religious holiday. Just to get that off of your mind. How many of you guys, this is your first Kwanzaa you've ever been to? Okay, welcome, welcome. Give yourselves a round of applause. Let me hear you. All right, all right, we got to warm it up, warm it up. Okay, so for those of you, the first day, my name is Brother Malik, and you will be following us through me and my partner in rhyme. Brother Clint Sockwell will be with me. He's not with us today, but he is here definitely in spirit. What I would like to do is talk to you a little bit about how this table is set up and why we pour libations. The term libations is this idea of liquid, right? And the pouring of liquid, water, milk, whatever beverage you may have to pour to your particular ancestor. Uh, like for instance, my mother loves strawberry soda. I might pour some strawberry soda to my mother, right? In her later days, she drank a lot of grape juice. I might pour to that. Today, we're going to pour water because it's the most universal thing to the human family. The Kwanzaa celebration is all based around us coming in unity. Today is the day of unity. And so when you bring your friends to this, you're bringing them, you're introducing them to black power. Black power is not a, a, uh, a bigoted statement. It is actually a statement that empowers our children to be okay with being black in America today. Ashe? Okay. All right. So let's move on. What I want to do is I want to take you here to the table. I'm going to grab this mic here. Let's see. Hello, hello. Oh, beautiful. This is great. Let's give it up for the mic man. Yeah. <laughs> This works. Okay, so as you see what we have here, those of you who are new, we have Vabunzi, which is to our children. These kernels represent their potential. Huh? We got, oh, beautiful. There he is. Say, hey, Brother Clint. 
He's trying to sneak in. <laughs> and then today was really important, which is the Unity Cup, right? So the Unity Cup is all based upon when you hear the term Umoja, it's always unity. So I'm going to say Umoja, you're going to say unity. Umoja? Unity. Umoja? Unity. Umoja? Unity. Okay, so we do this in a major spirit, and it's called Kikombe Cha Umoja. Kikombe Cha Umoja. It was Ma Ulana Karenga, the creator of us and the us organization who came up with the idea of building on Kwanzaa. So the one of the first things that were made was in fact this unity cup. Then you have what is called the Kinara. The Kinara and the Mishuma Asaba, the, sand, the, the candle holder and the seven candles, we have that will be lit today. And the only thing we will light today is the black candle. The black candle represents what? Unity? What's unity? 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 Umoja. Unity? Umoja. Unity? Umoja. Unity? Umoja. Unity? Umoja. Yes, yes, yes. And then we have Mazao, the crops. The crops represent how well we did throughout the year. So as long as we did well throughout the year, we put bountiful. But again, the, the, the table is never overset. It is affordable to every black family so that you can bring all of your friends in and be okay with sharing your black power with them. Ashe? Ashe? We use the term Ashe rather than amen so that people don't get offended that may not be in that religious form. We use the term Ashe because Ashe is a, a, a West African term that means it's all right. It's okay. It's all good. You know? So now, on the end of that, what I also will have here is the, uh, the, the Zawadi, right? So the reason why I said that is because I looked at this, and I've never seen this book, and I've seen every book. But this is a new book, and the idea is to keep yourself totally attached to all of the information that's coming out on Kwanzaa. But if you notice here, it's a very modest setting. It's never too much. It's only enough for our youth to be able to access. And then you have the Mkeka Mac. Can you say Mkeka? Mkeka. Mkeka. Mkeka means the mat, the foundation in which we celebrate and know our unity today. Give yourselves a big ashe and a round of applause. We're going to start going for our libations, and I'm going to have my brother Clint, since he's off up in the house today. Let's, let's give a big round of applause to our mayor, London Breed. Yeah. Let's do that. Yes, yes. And let's give a big round of applause to our president, Malia Cohen. All right. All right. I just want to make sure y'all know. So, brother Clint. Can we take him off, man? I think we should. You think we can hit him? I think we should. How do you think you want to hit him? We want to hit him hard and with a lot of knowledge so that they will celebrate Kwanzaa now and forever. Well, then let's hit him then. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. I'm loving this drum down here. Could you give me a little something up under my libation? Would that be good? Some fire? That's it. That's what I'm talking about right there. Libations is the pouring out of liquid in honor of those people who have passed away. With one person pouring liquid and the village responding in an African language, you say, Ashe, Ashe, and do it while the water is cascading. Now your voice has vibrated through the water and that's something special. Now it's not just water, it's our offering to the ancestors as clear as our intentions, as pure as our love for their legacy. 
I pour out a little water and say the name of an ancestor, and you say Ashe, that's like saying, uh-huh, I remember him, you go. I want to pour out a little love for my mother, Roberta Robertson. I want you to think of the names of five people, five people, each of you, five people, and you want to say their name all at the same time. I'll let you know when. It's going to be a wonderful thing. I want to pour out a little love for Nola D. Maxwell. I want to pour out a little love, a little love for Booker T. Washington. I want to pour out a little love for Dr. George Washington Carver. Can I pour out some love for Maya Angelou? What about Nelson Mandela? Can you think of the names of those people that I don't know? Right now, everyone, say the names of your loved ones. Say their names. 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 Honor them. Honor them. Say their names. Say their names. Say their names. It's been said that when you die, you die once. But when people stop saying your name, you will die again. Never stop saying the names of your loved ones. It's how they stay alive inside of us. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I want to thank the drummers for helping that libation go higher. I'm going to make sure that this water finds its way outside so that it can breathe again and rise up into the sky and maybe come back down on our faces like rain. Yes. Ashe? Where we at the program? All right. Where we are we here? Pour libations for yourself when you have your milk, when you have your soda. Say the name of a loved one and pour libations. Lift every voice. Yes. Wow. So we want like to have everyone please stand as we sing, lift every voice and sing. We have some wonderful children that are going to help us with this. And Sister Adrian Williams, can I get a hand for Adrian Williams? And the Village Project. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Man, that's looking good on you, man. They're going to start it, and then we go into this big, we got an arrangement of it. Okay. So we can have three up here and two, three Have who back uh, where? Okay. The tall ones. I see you guys in the back.
Put my tongue into the mic. Oh, yeah. What a nice way to do that. So you think you're lonely? Well, my friend, I'm lonely too. Come on. I wanna get back to my city by the bay. How about another hand for the children? Yes. Snuck a little journey in there. A little local, a little local something, something. Yes, indeed. Can you give me a, another start on that right there? Get ready. So the seven principles that we celebrate during Kwanzaa are the things that we hope to practice throughout the year. So I want you to follow along, if you can, the seven principles. Umoja is unity, and that's the way it should always be, to build and maintain unity in the family, nation, and community. As a people, we need to get together and share our blessings. That's the way it should always be. Umoja is unity. Kujichagulia is self-determination, you see? to define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. Kuji Chagulia is self-determination, you see? I need freedom to define my own goal so no one has to speak for me. Ujima, collective work and responsibility to build and maintain our community together. Your worries mine, my worries yours, whatever. Let's take responsibility for our past and what our future's gonna be. Ujima collective work and responsibility. Ujima'a, cooperative economics, uh, that money, man, to build and maintain our own stores, our own shops, our own businesses, getting props, sharing profits, feeling fine. I buy your goods, you buy mine. Believing people come before profits do, power to the people, to the me, to the you. Ujima'a, we must understand that money, man, Nia is purpose, like a little girl's name. 
to make our collective work the lifting and building of our community so our people can rise to our traditional greatness. We are social beings and we must work together, our hood. But Nia's purpose, so it's all good. Kuumba is creativity to do always as much as you can in the way that you can. So the community we inherit is more lovely than it began. Uh, enhance the world, a flavor from you, a taste from me. Kuumba is creativity. Imani is faith. We must have faith if we're going to do this. To believe in our hearts and our people, in our parents and our teachers too, and the righteousness of our struggle. Believe in the power of you. Selectively honor our leaders forever. Encourage the young with the mind, with faith. Y'all repeat after me. Umoja. Umoja is unity. Kujichagalia. Self-determination. Ujima. Collective work and responsibility. Ujima'a. Cooperative economics. Nia, that's purpose. That's why you get up in the morning. Kuumba, creativity. Imani, faith. Come on. Umoja. Kujichagalia. Ujima. Ujima'a. Nia. Kuumba. Imani. Ashe. Who's going to have a positive day? Ashe, Ashe. Who's going to have a positive learning day? Ashe, Ashe. Who will respect themselves today? Ashe, Ashe. Who will respect the teacher today? Ashe, Ashe. Who will smile today? Say, still. Who will laugh today? Say, I. Who will love today? Say, rise. Who gonna get that Kwanzaa on today? Say our shade. Okay, everybody, get your rock on like this. Oh, uh, yeah, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all, get your rock on now. That's right. Oh, uh, say, I'm gonna get my Kwanzaa on. Say, I'm gonna get my Kwanzaa on. Say, I'm gonna get me some Kwanzaa. I'm gonna get my Kwanzaa on. Clap your hand now, uh. Kwanzaa is a week-long celebration for a year-long practice. The things we do this week are just to remind us of what we have to do for the entire year. This is the 53rd time that they've lit the Kanara. 1966 was when this whole thing began. To share black culture, the black community, and black people with the world. Kwanzaa is an American holiday, like jazz, like gospel. It's a black thing made right here in the U.S. of A. They celebrate Kwanzaa all over the world, but they started Kwanzaa in Los Angeles, California in 1966. It's not a substitute for Christmas. In fact, it complements Christmas. Because after you spend up all your money, you can have a free holiday where you don't have to spend no money at all. Ah. Everybody, let this be the best year ever, 2019. Everybody say, I'm going to get my Kwanzaa on. Say, I'm going to get my Kwanzaa on. Say, I'm Get me some Kwanzaa. I'm gonna get my Kwanzaa on. Give yourself a hand. Some real beauty for you guys. Um, Brianna J. Daniels. We have Brianna J. Daniels. Are they in the building? I believe they are. The Brianna J. Dancer. J. Dancer. The Brianna J. Dancers. Like, J. Dancers. <laughs> like no, they here they come. 
Yeah. They was being here all along. Just watch. Wonder if she's going to stay. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. And this house just ain't no home. Anytime she goes away.
Yeah. Yes. That was some fire. Brianna J and dancers, thank you guys. If you want to see more of Brianna and her dancers, come to Hamilton Rec Center tomorrow at 1 o'clock. We'll have a whole day of dance. Is that Brianna J right there? That's Brianna J. That's Brianna J right there? Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let us take a look at you, baby. Yeah, come on, guys. Thank you. Another round of them. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The drummers. Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow. Wow. That's that. fire right there. That's fire. Right now, we're going to have our keynote speaker come up. But uh, I would like to acknowledge a couple of people in the house. I think I just saw Malia over there. Hi, Malia. How you doing? There you go. Uh-huh. Aren't you the governor or something? Didn't you just get elected to some cool job or something like that? <laughs> that would be good. That would look good. Governor Cohen. Uh, I also want to recognize the pastor from St. Cyprian's Church down in the front. I'm for the message name up, huh? Here, come, come, and do it. come and do it for me, because cause I don't want to mess the name up. Father Eric Matoria. Matoria? Yay. Matoria. Yes. Thank you, Father Eric. <laughs> right now, we'd like to bring to the stage Dr. Maestro Curtis and C. Notes for our keynote. Oh, I see your C. You see the C on the Dr. Maestro Curtis. Abaragani! Come on, y'all can do better than that. Abaragani! The response is, Umoja Abaragani. Let's try that again. Abaragani! It is indeed an honor to stand before you today to share some words. When Ms. Adrian Williams asked me to give this address today, I said, well, can I make it short? Because I know people got stuff to do. And it is the day after Christmas. But I would be remiss if I did not recognize the gravity and significance of this day 
for black human beings on this planet. For not only is it an honor, but it is incumbent upon me to stand before you as a student of Dr. Karinga. In fact, in the 70s, when we had a reemergence of the movement from the 60s, I was given the honor of being named Brother Jungea Sabali by then known Dr. Maulana Ron Karinga is what we called him back then. So if you see me on the street and you hear some people say, hey, that's Jungea, that's me. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge some people, and I'm going to be brief, believe me. Got to get some help here. It's kind of what happens when you thrush over the 60 mark. <laughs> They say things go. First of all, I'd like to honor and acknowledge our creator. What or whomever or whoever that may be to you. Importantly to our ancestors, the great kings and queens, leaders of antiquity, who taught and gave the world mathematics, science, art, politics, morality, and a higher consciousness of self and family. Importantly, community. Let me start by saying I want to acknowledge, first of all, the people who have gone on, our great ancestors like Mary McLeod Bethune, Dr. Martin Luther King, Sir Journer Truth. Y'all can help me out. I'm sorry. Malcolm X, Huey P. Newton. Marcus Garvey, Frederick Douglass, if I had to stay here and name all of those who have gone on before us, I'd be here till next year in this same sp spot, running off names. Let us now turn our attention to some some of the living legends who are still on the battlefield. Some of them who are providing emeritus support. People like John Lewis, who's still standing tall on that battlefield, who's letting people know we're still here, we're not going away. People like Andrew Young and Harry Belafonte, Maxine Waters, Louis Farrakhan, Angela Davis. Again, I can go on and on. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Dr. Amos Brown, who for many, many years in San Francisco was a freedom fighter. And even though his health is failing, you still see him hobbling around town, <laughs> still standing tall for what he believes is right. I would also like to honor and recognize whom I believe was the greatest mayor in the history of civilization, and that's the Honorable Mayor Willie Lewis Brown. Let's give him some love. I want to acknowledge Ms. Malia Cohen, who is standing tall and firm 
and is trudging forward to put San Francisco on a map in a way that it deserves to be. Ms. Kamala Harris, who's given Mr. Trump the blues, rightfully so. And last but not least, our own Miss London Breed, Mayor London Breed. <laughs> Briefly, I want to mention this young lady who some call the spitfire in the community. She may be small in stature, but she's mighty. <laughs> and she's the kind of person that will never take no for an answer. Ms. Adrian Williams. Ms. Williams has almost single-handedly gone into our community and looked after our babies, provided them with a sense of self and future, and has brought people like myself and Brother Clinton and Brother Malik and others in to help mentor these youngsters. She's to be commended. Give her some love. Now, what do all of the people I just mentioned have in common? They represent a greater good for our community. Let us examine that word community. I don't think it's an accident that in the word community, you see the word common, a different spelling of it. You see the word commune, but you see the word unity, community. When I look at the word community, I immediately think of unity. There's a word, a Swahili word, that is used that Dr. Karinga um, evokes. Generally, on the, on the last day of Kwanzaa, we harambe, which means to pull together. I want everyone to repeat after me. Harambe. harambe. The power of Umoja is the power of the people. Repeat after me. The power of Umoja is the power of the people. So today we're going to emojify Our Golden State Warriors love to use a saying that there's strength in numbers. That may be so. But there's a saying that says a house divided amongst itself cannot stand. Needless to say that you can have a gathering of many minds and many people, but if you're not unified, you get nowhere. I'm here to offer a solution. They used to say that Mayor Willie Brown would say, don't come to me complaining unless you have a solution. Today I offer a solution. I offer umoja, unity, umojify today, the power of Umoja, of Umoja, is the power of the people. See, many people complain about things, but they have no solution. In fact, complaining is not a solution. Someone said, once said that the man, that man created language to satisfy his deep need to complain. Maya Angelou said it best. If you don't like something, change it. And if you can't change it, change your attitude. 
My grandfather used to say, the time that it took for you, boy, to stand here and complain, you could have done something about it. We must rally around our leaders who have our best interest at heart. When they're wrong, we got to tell them they're wrong. But we cannot be on the sidelines hating, always having something negative to say, complaining, and we ain't even on the ship. You're standing still. What's the matter? Why is it that you have something to say when you're not even doing anything? We know we've been gentrified, marginalized, and now we're small numbers in San Francisco, and I'm talking about the African-American community because I am solely dressing you at this, at this moment. We're in crisis mode. We're beyond crisis mode. I remember a time growing up on Fillmore Street when I used to try to shine shoes in front of Chicago barbershop but used to get run, run off by a homie who'd say, boy, you can't do that around here. I got my own sh shoe shine place here. I remember seeing black businesses all the way from Herman Market Street all the way down to Galileo High School every day in our community. Now that African-American numbers have dwindled, it is important that we umojify. Umojify is out of self-preservation. They say the first law of self, of nature is self-preservation. But we must look beyond just the self and understand that we must take care of, of our community. We must look after our elders. We must cherish and honor, honor our elders. They provide us with a treasure trove of information on how to move forward, how to navigate this thing we call life. Many times we think that we've gone through something, but they've already gone through it. Just a different name. We have pretty much thrown our elders to the side. We live in a society that looks at getting old as something negative. When traditionally in our society, in the black community, we have always honored and treasured our elders. Can you all say that again? My grandfather used to say, just keep a living. You got to get old. Well, it seems to me if we take care of our elders, we're storing up in our karma bank for ourselves so that when we reach that point, maybe someone will reach down and say something nice and good about us. Maybe someone will respect us and honor us and cherish us. We also know that it is important for us to continue to instill in our, our babies respect and honor for family and community. I'm getting the, the, sh the, the sign over there. Let me just say this. Kwanzaa was created out of a dying, crying need of a displaced people lost in the wilderness. We must umojify, identify, reconnect to the tradition of our greatness. That is why we celebrate this. We come from great thinkers, great scientists, great inventors, people of high moral substance. Kwanzaa was created to remind us of that very thing, to remind us that we're not slaves. Harambe. Umoja. So let it be written, so let it be said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Tetis and C Note. Thank you. Well, we have a treat for you before we wrap this up. It's a beautiful thing when you start early and you get cool real fast. That is the case with these children that you're about to see right now. And I want to acknowledge another biggie on the front row right there, Brother Mel Simmons. That's right. Caught you on the corner. Caught you on the corner. Sitting up there, all incognito. I know. Here we go. I want you guys to put your hands together for Dimension Dance Troop.
Let them remember you. Let them remember your, your, your cheers. Let them remember your cheers. Give it up. Get up to them once again, once again. Let everyone stand. Please stand up. Everyone, please stand up. Okay, we, we, we got something else going on here. Here we go. President Cohen, did you want to? Thank you very much, President Cohen. celebration. I can't think of a better day. I just want to say thank you for coming out to celebrate with us on the first day of Kwanzaa. I want to recognize all of our community leaders that have put this thing together. Thank you very much for teaching our culture. This is my nephew, Lanson. He's coming in town to visit with us. And I, sister, I just want to say thank you. It's so good. Thank you to the Village Project. Thank you. And thank you to the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. And we're going to have a week full of activities. Please check your program. Please come out and support us. It's very important that we come together collectively and we celebrate our African American culture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good job. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, guys, most of you guys have programs. We're on our way to Moad, uh, the Museum of the African Diaspora, and then later on tonight at 6 o'clock, we will be at the African American Arts and Culture Complex with Fillmore Slim and Band. Thank you for coming out, Kwaheri. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go into Harambe. If we can, can then we all create a circle around here? I mean, we don't, just step close, please. This is a time where we all pull together. So let's all pull together. We can't do this without pulling together. If we can unify, we can sanctify. <laughs> let's get it, let's get it. We got our elders. We're going to emojify. Umojify. Listen to that. Thanks to my good brother, Curtis, been knowing him over 20 years. We've been doing it, man. All right, so if you are in this room, just stand close to someone, and what we're gonna do is we are going to move in Harambe. So now uh, what we're gonna do is you can release, your, release the hands of the partner near you because you're gonna need to do a little bit of exercising. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our fist. We're going to take our hand up in the air. We're going to pull our hands down over our heart, saying Harambe. And we're going to do it seven times. Is that all right with you? Ashe? 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 All right, well, let's get it. Harambe. 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 Harambe, Harambe, Harambe. And let's hold it. Harambe. Let's all pull together. 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 Habari Ghani and Harambe. See you next time. Tuta Nana, as my brother said. <laughs>